Baie welkom by die getuinis. Ons keir vandag sal met Erich Koch hier in die mooie kaapstad. Erich het al die wereld rondgereis omdat hy die woord van die Heere gaan verkondig het en hy het met sy eie oor Signs and Wonders van die Heere al gesien. En selfs in sy eie leven het hy het beleef toe medikasie nie eers meer uh, optie was nie of die antwoord was nie. Baie keer sien die mens net die goeie kant, maar mens besef nie dat hy moes ook baie opofferings gemaakt het om hierdie pad te moes stap waar hy vandag is. Maar kom ons luister na sy story. Erich, baie welkom. Good afternoon. <laughs> Erich gaan vandag vir ons in Engels praat, maar ek gaan in Afrikaans praat. Erich, baie mense hoor net al die goeie kant van een persoon wanneer hulle die wereld rond toer om die woord van Heere te gaan verkondig, maar bitter min mense besef wat achter toe dier gebeur. En jy het dier het ding gegaan in jou reis om, en jy het gegroe, maar daar het baie opofferings van jou vereis om te wees waar jy vandag is. Vertel vir ons een bykie van jou journey. Hey, thank you man. Yeah, it's a privilege just to be able to share with you. Um, so my journey started more than almost 30 years ago now. It actually started when, as a young kid, I stole a bunch of Gideon Bibles. <laughs> no. so these Christians would come to my school and try to tell me about this good news of Christ. Yeah. And I had so many issues I was working through that I never found comfort from Christians. Mm. Most of the time, the Christians were the one who were responsible for a lot of the pain I was working through. Yeah. So in my rebellion, I would steal a bunch of Gideon Bibles and I would keep them with me okay. to smoke them. Just in complete disrespect to the Father, to, to Jesus, and to the Christians. But in that time, I would actually study the scriptures because they're always in my pocket. When I need a piece of paper, I could use them to smoke. And in that season, I actually discovered that, that there's someone inside of the scriptures which I've never seen necessarily within the church, and that is Christ. Mm-hmm. So from an early place, I actually started just wondering who is this Christ person because I've seen churches I've seen Christians and I must have been in my 20s the first time I actually met a Christian which was so filled with the love of God that I thought I'd met him face to face sure and yet he was just a normal Christian guy I was I was meddling with a lot of spiritual and demonic and new age religion and I'll never forget that day when that guy looked at me in my eyes it was as if I saw Jesus Christ face to face and the reason I say that is all the demonic within me had no power they wanted to go run away and flee <laughs> and i could feel a supernatural fear come over me in this yeah and because of this guy's testimony and how he spoke to me that night i actually came to christ even though christ has been chatting with me and talking with me and leading me towards him mm-hmm. over the years i do actually meet someone which was filled with power and love Child. and an authority mm. someone who knew christ But little did I know the bunch of pain which is this is going to open up to me going forward. When I became a Christian, my my family didn't really understand Christ. So my first few times as a Christian, I had to sleep outside. Wow. I ended up coming down to to Cape Town. The the people I was with, they thought I'd gone completely crazy. I've studied a lot of in the academia, tertiary education into analytical sciences. The majority of my friends thought that I'd gone completely insane. They will have that like Bikki Groen Dakis moet gaan. Hi, Erik. Um, so it definitely started as a very isolated journey. Yeah. But what was beautiful is that the more I go through the difficulties, I met Christ over and over again. And it was actually started on my journey. It got me into a, into a church which was able to welcome me. First time in my life as my 20s, walked into a church where they're actually able to receive me, accept me. Mm. Mm. But even the more I just spent time with them, I realized I didn't actually necessarily fit in. Okay. The picture and the image and the person of Christ who I saw, I felt like I was still really isolated mm. because I saw a lot of good meaning Christians, but I didn't meet Christ very often. And ha, mm. it's sure. a painful journey which starts from there, but yet glorious. The scripture talks about accounted joy when you go through various sufferings. And the Lord had to start showing us what that meant. Chill. So I went into the mission field just out of my zeal for Christ, maybe because I was English in a different culture. Mm-hmm. I was misunderstood, bad mouthed, rejected. I was in different forms of church leadership. There's nothing greater to often put you through the fire than sitting yeah. in church leadership positions yeah. in different areas. Most of the time, because there's a lot of human desire, which is good zeal human zeal 
Mm. And if you try to sh- come share Christ, even in a good church environment, mm. can be very often seen as arrogance outside. Sure. So then, I'm trying to think of some of the more interesting times. So I spent as a missionary up in up in Africa. It included a lot of time in prison cells. Wow. It includes. It includes glory stories, hey, mm-hmm. in the midst of pain and suffering. Mm. I was on a mission trip up into the Islamic Republic of the Comores, and it's a completely closed nation. But in the background, I I was in a minibus accident, broke my spine, mm. and a lot of the people in the minibus with us, all the intercessors and, and prayer warriors, mm. it was not good. No. We were sent all around the, the planet pretty much with fractured skulls, broken spines. Wow. Some of us spent months and months in, in the hospital just getting be- better. But the reality is that the Holy Spirit pitched up, that we saw villages after villages, families after families wow. just receive Christ. The Spirit of Christ would pour upon them that they would start dancing supernaturally. Wow. Okay, in completely closed areas. One of the leading um, teachers, the Islamic teachers, would actually join us yeah. and be at times the first one to accept Christ. Sure. Okay, mm. so we have got the beauty stories behind that. Mm. And then, of course, the enemy is not glad when we actually go up our faith and do sure. these things. Yeah. And then it's within months and years of rehabilitation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but even yeah. on that whole mm. journey to learn Christ, to know that He's there the whole time. Mm. And often, one of the things which is most probably the most painful is not even the, the physical injuries we can go through in our body mm. or the rejection which we get from the people who don't know Christ. Yeah. I think part of our journey is being misunderstood by those people who really think and really do love Christ. Yeah. I think when it comes to the rejection within the body, within the church, that's most probably one of the more painful things to actually go with because it's not something you can normally talk about to everyone. Mm-mm. But when you start t- talking to people one on one, you realize there's a lot of this, you mm. know, and we're forced to forgive so quickly that we don't always handle it. Mm. You know, that you're not allowed to speak about it so quickly or yeah. else it's not in doing the Christian thing. Yeah. Eric, a lot of people are going through this, what you are talking about. How did you deal with that pain and rejection? And and how did how do you help other people today? Because it's I mean, it's all over the world and yeah. it's it's a fact. There's nothing that we can we can't smooth talk it. Well, I'm going to use a very thing close to home where we got this breakthrough. Yeah. So my wife has been struggling with a brain disease for more than a decade. Mm. She had it just before we got married and well into almost eight, eight down nine years into our marriage before she got healed. But in that season, she would actually have attacks on her brain that she would get such extreme pain encounters that she would just fall to the floor, drop over. Mm. Ah, just crazy. It's a, it's a word which I can't pronounce fully now. But it, it just hits the pain centers of the brain and she loses all control. Mm. A lot of medis- medication, a lot of people praying, a lot of people wanting to encourage her. Mm. But in that entire journey, no one, I think, ever asked me how I was doing. Sure. Yeah. And I don't want to make it now a selfish thing because no, no. we put ourselves into her. So I'm using it as the example. Mm-hmm. And even even though my wife and I, we, we had one specific cool thing to help us get through our pain, is to try to find someone who's in more pain than us. Yeah. So to get through it, we had the mindset to actually work together in prayer to trust the Lord for people who are in greater pain than us and actually try to bless them, encourage them and, and help them deepen their Lord, their Lord walk, the walk with the Lord. Yeah. But what actually I didn't realize is that two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, four, four months, I would be the one there with my wife holding her hands because she would try to push her ring, her wedding ring into her into her eye, into the back of her head to try to get rid of the pain. Yeah. So I would be there for years holding her hands down mm. and just trying to comfort her. Mm. We'd be praying for people, other people would be getting healed. We'd be seeing this regularly, other people getting healing from brain issues. Yeah. People from depression, suicidal tendencies. There were so many breakthroughs in the spirit. Mm. But almost every single morning, mm. between two and four, I'd be holding my wife's hands. There would be days where I'd have all this faith to just pray. And then other days I would just be weeping. Sure. And just weeping because mm. no one's hearing me. And if people do come encourage us, and I bless them which did, and I honor them which did, mm. but this was just key to my breakthrough, I realized that for years no one actually saw the guy. Mm. No one actually saw the support structure around people which are really suffering. Yeah. So what my wife went through was bad enough. So I'm not yes. comparing my pain to hers. It was just yeah. that key. 
And then we came across a, a weird CD, something, something put together by Graham Cook. Mm? And he's got this amazing way to find joy in suffering. Oh, yes. But not emotional knowledge joy. Sorry, not like, you know, I'm joyful, you know. <laughs> I, I am joyful. It's difficult stuff. I'm talking about finding Christ in the midst of the suffering. Yes. So that when the pain comes, when the rejection comes, when everything seems broken, my first emotion has become, Christ, where are you? Mm. And I don't know why, most of the time he's smiling and looking mm. and he's right there. So instead of me having my focus on that pain, yes. to look at Christ, mm. to understand the comfort he wants to give. Mm. I have this one scripture which has just become foundational to us through this journey. It starts off in 2 Corinthians and says, Praise be to the God of all comfort, yeah. to the Father of all comfort who comforts us in our, put your transgression, your pain, your, your rejection right there, that who comforts us in that. Mm. A little bit later on it says, Brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant of the pain I went through. So it's Paul writing, this guy's, he's got the faith to raise himself up from the dead. You know, this guy's crazy. <laughs> so yeah. Paul writes this, he says, I don't want you to be ignorant, brothers, of the pain and hardship we went through in Asia. Yeah. It was so bad that I desired death to free me. He was looking forward or expecting death to free him. Hell. Now imagine how bad it was for Paul. Yeah. Okay, he says, I don't want you to be ignorant of how painful it was. Yet he starts off by saying, praise be to the God of all comfort, sure. to the Father of all comfort. Mm. And then that next sentence says, so that we went through this, so that we can comfort others mm. with the same comfort we ourselves have received from God. Mm. Not from a book, not from a counseling course, not from something good which you heard on a YouTube video. But he has equipped us to comfort others with the same comfort we ourselves have received from him. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it triggers a joy and a hope. Mm. And actually, Lord, I've earned my PhD through suffering <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to love on people, yes. to walk with people, yeah. because that's what you did with me. Mm. Mm. So the only answer I can give you is so you point cool. people to see Christ, mm. not the not the extras, not the add-ons, mm. to see Him. Ja, en, en jou boodskap vandag, Erich, is, is om hoop te bring, want daar is soveel mense wat het nodig het vandag, en, en jy wil graag die hoop vir hulle bring, ongeag, want die Heere geef ons elke keer een belofte, mm. en hy geef ons elke keer een droom, en hy het vir julle ook gegeen, maar om vast te hou aan die belofte van die Heere, ongeag hoe donker, een situasie lyk, like, ongeag om, om, hoe menselik, onmoendlik dit lyk, like, is jou boodskap vandag om hoop te bring. Altijd. Vertel vir ons, hoekom sê jy, jy wil hoop te bring? The reality is to find joy in knowing Christ. Ja. Yeah. What has happened, what we have experienced in, in, our, in our setup, is many people love God, but play church. Ja. Yeah. The prayer sure. pointers, the intercession, is all about topics around, mm. Christ, but mm. not Christ. Mm. They talk kingdom, they talk this, they talk church life, they talk this, but for some reason, we've been missing Christ. Mm. So to be able to bring Christ into a situation is a different story. After after 10 years with my, with my wife's brain injury um, and my broken spine from that same mission outreach I told you earlier, yeah. we were suffering with this together. I needed spinal fusion at that same season as my wife needed more brain surgery. Sure. Medical aid is finished, so um, you know what I'm talking about, or you don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. There's nothing left. It's not only my spine, which needs to be fused with it into medical aid, it's also her needing to go for another brain surgery. No help. There's just nothing we can do anymore. She's on so much medication that, that the doctors are telling her she'll never have kids again. Her womb is completely destroyed. Wow. There's just no more hope for brain. They need to do another brain surgery, but they can't really because there's really old scar tissue there, so they, they're wondering what else to do. Um, and there's just no more hope. Wow. It seems like there's no more hope. Mm. But when we start seeing Christ inside of this, it just it, I'm talking about some of the most painful stuff you can imagine. All of a sudden, I cannot but smile because I know who He is. <laughs> I know what Christ went through, and yet for the joy set before Him, He endured the cross. Mm. Whoa, that's an inspiration for me to learn from that. <laughs> and inside of that same season, the Lord used a, a dear brother of ours from India in a healing ministry to come down to Cape Town and speak healing into my wife. Wow. We've had 50, 100, 200 people pray for her already. Mm. But it's the first time I actually said, I saw someone who knew that his faith was where it had to be. 
Yeah. Many of us get offended when we say our faith is not strong enough because of this God heals, God heals and our faith is not strong. But to heal is a step of faith from us in obedience. Mm. Mm. So our faith can be too weak to heal someone. And the reason I say that is because I met someone whose faith and intimacy with Christ inspired me. <laughs> he came to pray for my wife. He said, Jesus released that healing. I could see it. He, he told me. My wife didn't have that healing straight away. She was crying. We go home. Well, more people again. We, we pray for other people. Everyone else got healed, but not us. Yeah. yeah. The next morning, we go through to see him again, just as a friend over a cup of coffee and says, look, the healing didn't come. And he looked, he says, I could see he was telling me, the Spirit of God was telling me. <laughs> he did. He did. Yeah. And then he looked at my wife and said, no, the healing's right there. Mm. He can't pray for anything more because he knows what Christ told him. He knew Christ. <laughs> he knew Christ. He didn't doubt it for a second. He didn't be politically correct and pray for my wife because I asked him to. Mm. He knew Christ wasn't going to pray for her now anymore because she was healed. Already healed. <laughs> yeah. He was just, he, he, plays the, he plays the game on top of like a, a, what do you call it, on a stage <laughs> because he was waiting for the perfect time for the release. Yeah. So in our congregation, which we were busy with, there were a few hundred people there. The, the worship singers were busy with and my wife hasn't joined a worship session for maybe the last 10 years. Sure. She would have earbuds on the inside and then she'd have the gel ear things over and she'd have this big noise cancelling wow. hammer mm -hmm. jack earphones and then she'd wait outside of the building wow. so that sure. when the worship music and the drums were finished she'd come back inside yeah. but for some reason that morning she forgot to leave the church she forgot to put the headphones on she forgot to put the <laughs> we'll play CC yeah. Yeah. and then for the first time in the last decade sure. She was in the middle of that worship session, raising her hands. Oh. And then there was just this awareness of what happened. Mm. Mm. Where the people next door to her, myself, we saw her. We recognized that she was here. Mm. And then the person next door to me, and then we just started weeping. It was just this, sure. this, this circle of, of quietness, this holy awareness mm. just radiating out of her as the rest of the church just became quiet, as we all witnessed her standing in the front there, raising her hands and singing with. Yeah. Yeah. Completely healed completely healed we went back to the neuro neurologist afterwards the neuroscientist afterwards to double check mm. that this guy was aware of god's presence that he himself had to confess that jesus christ alone could have done this mm. and the beautiful thing behind this god didn't just heal her mind and her brain <laughs> he healed her womb completely oh yeah which the doctors had said she'll never have kids again yeah and then God blessed us with a third little kid called Rebecca Hope. Oh, I'm so special. And sure. I think there's a part of the suffering of going through this, mm. which makes it deeper and worth so much more than when you taste it. Mm. That I desire depth. I don't desire quick numbers. Mm -hmm. If I get something without necessarily suffering for it, I might not respect it so much. Yeah, yeah. But there's a deepening in my journey when I go through some suffering that I can find a joy in it. Mm. I can use this as an example from a lesson my, my wife had. So she's been through a hijacking and she had a mugging here down in Paro. Um, some guys put a knife to her back, stole her stuff. Mm -hmm. She had two little kids with her. Um, I can't remember my boy's four or five years old. Mm -hmm. So one four-year-old, one five-year-old by herself on foot tracker with a knife in her back. Yeah. They stole everything from her. Mm -hmm. We went back to the church that evening, to a little church gathering we had that evening. And she was full of joy, <laughs> expectant hopeful knowing that god had the situation mm. my beloved friends caring heart counselors counseling what they said yet if your wife is in denial she's got to go through the proper mourning processes here and i said no my wife is not crazy you don't understand the journey we've gone through <laughs> you know i'm going to stand in joy expectation because papa's got this yeah when the scripture says count it joy when you go through various trials that's what it means, counted expressive emotional joy, because there's hope, because we know the one who made heaven and earth <laughs> as our father, not far away, but here. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what happened that next morning? A car pitched up outside my front door here Yeah. to replace everything which my wife had, had stolen yeah. with the upgrade phone, money, <laughs> blessings, everything. Oh, wow. I mean, they didn't know what happened the no. night before. <laughs> That's <idiotic. laughs> But you can be rejected by the body of Christ yeah. That they think you are naive mm. because of your love for Christ. Mm. So how is it possible? Yeah. I know my father. Mm. I know what he thinks about me. I know what he goes through with me. Mm. 
there is no other comfort which we can give or understand except, do you know your father? Yeah. Erich, daar is so veel dinge wat in jylle leven gebeur het, maar een van die belangrijkste dinge in jylle leven was om jylle kinders groot te maak, om die stem van die heren te hoor. En ek weet as mama's en papa's wat vandag na hierdie boodskap luister, want jy het die boodskap wat jy wil oordra, hoe belangrijk dit vir jylle was om jylle kinders groot te maak, om te reageer op die stem van die heren? I think it's most important to realize that we're just normal, like everyone else, say. Eh? I've got my struggles, the bills have to be paid, we've got to get the kids to school, normal life, eh? But if we as fathers, we need to take responsibility for our own kids' spiritual welfare. You can't give them off to the Sondag school or to well-meaning teachers. Mm. God bless them, but the responsibility stays with the parents. Yes. So if I've got one message, it's for the parents to take responsibility to pray with your kids, to show your kids what it looks like to be in a prayer lifestyle, to hear the Father's voice. But even in my personality, I'll use this as example, my, my son Caleb, he loves motorbikes. And we went to go ride on a, a big track and he really felt the Lord told him he needs to put on the mask, the goggles that day. And so I, I shook my hand. I said, no, you don't know. It was quiet, Papa. <laughs> you know, I wasn't listening to the Spirit at all, but he knew how to hear the Holy Spirit's voice in the midst of my anger. Yeah. So I said afterwards, okay, just put on the mask, go for the spin. Fully padded up everything. Eh? We do it safely. Was Within seconds, what happened is that he hit a, a big rock in the, sure. on, the, on the track. He fell off the motorbike mm. and he landed with a brick through the visor, through the mask, that the brick connected directly with wow. into that goggles. Yo. If he was not obedient to the Lord, yeah. we would have to have facial reconstruction. That would have been bad. It was a high speed. And all that happened is that that mask completely broke, went up into his skin and a nice big scar there. Yeah. But the brick went th right through his helmet visor. And I had to do a lot of repentance. Sure. That even while my kid is with the blood running down his face, saying, Jesus told me. Wow. Lucky I listened there, Daddy. <laughs> wow. wow. A piece of humble pie right there for a father. Ooh. Sure, sure. So all that I can do, I realize that I'm limited in what I can do, but I can show him the good father. Mm. I can teach my kid to spend time in prayer, to be sensitive to the voice of Holy Spirit and give him the place to make mistakes. Because it's in the place of making mistakes that he discovers the actual voice of the Father. So I just have to give Christ that praise that he's, that he's engaged with families. He wants families to know what it means to have him in the household. When you're screaming at each other, when you're changing nappies, when the bills aren't being paid, and when Eskom drops off the light at the wrong moments. <laughs> yeah. That you can know Christ in everyday life together as a family. Yeah. I don't think there's anything more beautiful than that. Yeah. That you may know him. Revelation 3.20 talks about people outside or inside of a church doing church services. But Christ is outside of the door knocking. We must make sure we're not busy with things about the kingdom. That we're not busy with things about Christ. That we're not busy with prayer pointers but that we come to a place within ourselves that we get to know the one who abides within us. That we start obeying him, that we lay down everything else, that we only do that thing which we see him do. And we only say that word which we hear him say to us. Not more, not less, but to rest in him, to find joy in him. That when the enemy wants to come and curse you, you get filled with an exciting joy within because you know him because He loves you, because He loves you, He will turn every curse into a blessing. <laughs> and that becomes our strength. Mm. So I want to invite you to live that life with your Father, who is faithful and just always. And Erik, you have the bedienung here in Para North. As there is any person who is in contact with you, where can you get in your hand? Most probably just via WhatsApp or... Okay. Erik, hulle is een besonder hier, sal nou op die skerm verskyn. En as jylle met hulle in contact wil kom, as jy voel, jy het iemand nodig om een pad saam met jou te stap, as jy seer gekry het, of jy het net nodig om bykie dieper te weet wie Christus is, kom, 
Kom join vir Erik hulle, hulle sal enige tyd die pad saam met julle stap. Ja. Erik, vreselik baie dankie vir jou tyd, vir jou getuienis, en dat jy met ons gedeel het, dit was fantastisch geweest. Ons is vir jou een tydskrif en een beker, wat jy kan geniet, en elke keer wat jy die beker uitdrink, laat die heren jou sal vol en vol, so dat jy altyd joyful sal wees om die, hoe die woord van die heren kan verkondig. Yes, yes Lord, dankie, baie dankie. <laughs> Ons is so blij, jylle was deel van hierdie getuin. As jylle weet, iemand het nodig om hoop te kry vandag. Iemand het ook seer gekry, stuur hierdie boodskap aan en jy kan dalk net een verskil in iemand sy leven maak. Tot de volgende keer, shalom. Shalom.